Hi, my name's Sam Webster. We teach anatomy. Um, that means I'm not an immunologist, but I want to introduce the anatomy of the immune system. That is, I want to look at the physical things, the gross things, the big bits of the immune system. Or to think of it another way, I want to answer the question, where is the immune system in the body? Uh, what is the immune system for? I think we all know what the immune system's for. There is a little bit of nuance to it. It's to protect the body from microorganisms that might be harmful, while also recognizing that some microorganisms are actually beneficial. We're talking about, you know, bacteria and that sort of thing. Bacteria, viruses, fungi. Um, the immune system is involved in destroying cells that might become cancers while recognising that other normal cells of the body are normal. You can see it's got quite a difficult job to do. Um, and I'm going to tack on another one here, which is really important anatomically, is that um, the immune system is also part of the system that collects excess fluid from the tissues and returns it to the cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system is a closed loop. You've got a heart, which is a pump. It pumps blood out through arteries. Blood comes back through veins. In the tissues, we have capillary beds. Uh, nutrients and good gases like oxygen leak out into those tissue beds so the cells can make use of them. They return their CO2, their metabolic waste products, and it goes round and around, right? But those tissues have to be wet, they have to have fluid in them, and the capillary beds are a little bit leaky. Not all of that fluid is connect collected on the venous side. So the lymphatic system collects that excess fluid and returns it back. And the lymphatic system is very much a part of the immune system. So what are the organs of the immune system? Well, <laughs> the first one that tends to get missed out is what my friend here does not have, well, okay, you haven't got a lot of things, but skin. Skin is the barrier between the outside world and the inside world. So the skin is a physical barrier from all those microorganisms. So it's really important. So it can, could be considered part of the immune system. Likewise, we have external surfaces inside us. The airway is an external surface inside us. The gastrointestinal tract is a tube that runs through us, but it's an external surface that's been internalized. Uh, the genitourinary tracts are similar. These have got mucous membranes, and those mucous membranes inside us, in those tubes, do a similar job to the skin. They try to protect us from those, the external environment. So the mucous membranes, uh, the mucus helps and saliva and things like that help prevent bacteria taking a hold in some places. And yet, of course, the gastrointestinal tract is filled with bacteria that are really useful to us. So it's a balancing act. If I can go back to the idea of the lymphatic system and lymph for a moment, that excess fluid, or that, not even excess fluid, that fluid that collects in our tissues is returned to the cardiovascular system through lymphatic vessels. So they, it's a one-way system, it doesn't have a pump, it's very low pressure, the excess fluid is collected and through various means, I've talked about the lymphatic system elsewhere in more detail, that fluid passes through these tiny vessels and back to the cardiovascular system, mostly up here, sometimes up here. And the fluid is called lymph, it's mostly water. It has a little bit of cellular debris in there. It has some protein in there. It's very similar to blood plasma. And that lymph is passing through the lymphatic vessels. And those lymphatic vessels will encounter lymph nodes, often at joints. And the lymph nodes are like a mass of uh, reticular fibers, connective tissue, holding cells. Guess what those cells are called? That's right, they're lymphocytes. So the lymphocytes are white blood cells and they're named lymphocytes because they were first identified as part of the lymphatic system. And lymphocytes are the core of our immune system. So that tissue fluid, that lymph, is carried to the lymph nodes. In the lymph nodes are lymphocytes and other cells of the immune system, which means that if there is a path pathogen in the tissue and it gets carried to a lymph node, it will be presented to those cells of the immune system. 
and they can do something about that. Um, and we find that we go through multiple lymph nodes and then up here, and then up here, so in the neck, here's the clavicle. And just deep to the clavicle, we find these major veins. These are normally covered by muscle. They're very, very well protected. This is the internal jugular vein, draining blood from the head and the neck. This is the subclavian vein, draining blood from the upper limb. And usually around here, we call this the venous angle. Most of the lymph from the body will drain back into the blood at the left venous angle here. Uh, the right venous angle drains lymph from the right um, head and neck, right upper limb, right side of the thorax. There's a few funky quirks going on here, but that's where the lymph returns back to the blood and then goes into the blood and off around the body. The blood is also part of the immune system. Lymphocytes are within lymph nodes. They circulate in the lymphatic system. They're also in the blood. They circulate in the blood. That's why they're called white blood cells. We divide or group the organs of the lymphatic system into primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. And um, there are a number of tissues involved. The bone marrow is where the cells of the lymphatic system come from. So the bone marrow is where we have the progenitor cells of the blood. So all the cells of the blood in the adult come from the bone marrow. Um, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are produced here. Now B lymphocytes are produced and they mature in the bone marrow and they go off around the body. T lymphocytes are produced in an immature form, a thymocyte. And the T lymphocytes, these thymocytes, will then travel to the thymus, which is deep to the sternum. Sternum, take this off. There is the thymus gland, lung, lung, heart. A little bit of a depression, a little bit of a space in between on top of the great vessels. That's the thymus. It gets called thymus gland, but it's the thymus. Don't mix it up with the thyroid, which is up in the neck here, which is a gland. Those immature T lymphocytes pass to the thymus and they mature in the thymus and they become T lymphocytes and then they go off around the body. Now that process happens when the immune system is developing, so early in life, childhood and adolescence. Um, this is actually a large thymus. Mine will not be this size, mine will have degenerated and disappeared. Um, and in the elderly cadavers that we dissect, I don't really find much trace of a thymus, it's difficult to distinguish it from fat. So the thymus is active during childhood and adolescence when the immune system is developing. T lymphocytes mature in here, and then those T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes from the bone marrow, you kind of get an idea of why they're named like that. There's more to the story, but it'll do for now. Um, and then they go and populate the secondary lymphoid organs in the body, and they live there. And they can proliferate in those secondary lymphoid organs, which means that we can make more B lymphocytes from existing B lymphocytes. We can make more T lymphocytes from existing T lymphocytes, right? Now, that means that the thymus and the bone marrow are the primary lymphoid organs. Um, lymphocytes are produced and mature in the primary lymphoid organs. Then they go and exist in the secondary lymphoid organs. So what are the secondary lymphoid organs? <sighs> lymph nodes are secondary lymphoid organs. I already said that lymphocytes reside in the lymph nodes and can move in and out of the lymph nodes. So these are some of the lymph nodes here. These are superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are secondary lymphoid organs. Also, oh, this part's gonna fall out. I'll take it out before it falls out. In here, you can just see it. Just see it poking out there. All right, let's take out the liver, take out the stomach. Now you can see it much better. It's the spleen. The spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ. Now the spleen here um, has a very good blood supply. Inside the spleen, we would see white pulp and uh, red pulp. 
Now the white pulp, we see it surrounding the blood vessels as they go into the spleen. So those, the white pulp has got those white blood cells. It's got lymphocytes and other cells of the immune system, essentially monitoring the blood as it goes past. And then the red pulp, the other job of the spleen, the other main job of the spleen is to recycle old red blood cells, old erythrocytes. Uh, so when they start to get a little bit stiff, uh, they pass into the spleen, they get broken up, broken down, past the liver, recycled, lots of fun biochemistry happens as a result, but we recycle the haemoglobin. So the spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ because lymphocytes and other cells of the immune system reside there. And I said that we have these external surfaces inside us, these tubes, we have an airway and a gastrointestinal tract. Have you got any... Mm, here we go, half a head. Um, we have tonsils, for example. We have tonsils dotted around this opening into the body. The tonsils are secondary lymphoid organs. They're part of the immune system. We find lymphocytes stored here and other cells of the immune system monitoring what's going in here. Um, these also get called uh, mucosa associated lymphoid tissues or malts. And we see them in the gastrointestinal tract as well as payers patches. Sometimes they're called malts, sometimes they're called gouts, gut associated lymphoid tissue. So there are lymphoid tissues and also actually within the mucosa, within the, like, the lining of these tubes, there will be other smaller masses of lymphoid tissues in which lymphocytes and other cells of the immune system reside and can mount an immune response from. So these patches of lymphoid tissue that we find around the body, like the tonsils and the payers patches, they might also get called lymphoid nodules. But hopefully you're getting comfortable with the word lymph and lymphoid and lymphatic now, and you're associating that term with the immune system. Now, we have around 400 lymph nodes dotted around the body. Um, and these lymphocytes in those secondary lymphoid organs, um, that's where they will mount an immune response from. Uh, be that an infection or a vaccination, the lymphocytes and other cells of the immune system will respond to that and they will make more cells, they will proliferate. So if you have a tissue with a certain number of cells and it makes more cells, that tissue will get bigger. So it's normal for lymph nodes to become larger, uh, the spleen to become larger, tissues of the secondary lymphoid organs to become larger in response to an infection, when the immune system is working, when it's mounting an immune response. So yeah, you may well palpate um, enlarged lymph nodes in, in the neck when you have an infection in the oral cavity and in the pharynx, right? And likewise elsewhere in the body. Can we now answer the question that I posed at the beginning, where anatomically is the immune system in the body? It's distributed throughout the body, in the lymph nodes, in the spleen, in the mucosa associated lymphoid tissues like the tonsils. It's in the bone marrow, it's in the thymus when we're younger. And it's all connected by the lymphatic system and the blood. And the cells of the immune system move between the two and move around the body. Uh, and that is <laughs> one of the reasons why it's so complex. That is just the start. Immunology and the immune system is one of the most complex systems in the body. It really does rival the nervous system for complexity. But it is really important to our survival um, and it's really important uh, to life and health. All right, so that's the anatomy of the immune system, an introduction. I have talked about these, these structures in much more detail elsewhere. So if you want more, go and hunt those out. Otherwise, thank you very much. See you next time.